Welcome to International Love Story, the podcast about multicultural and long distance relationships. My name is Christina, and today I'm uh, sitting in Brazil right now. I'd like to welcome Marianneke. Marianneke is originally from the Netherlands, but she's living in Brazil. Um, she's going to live there for a couple of more months until she's going to move back into her home country. But this is actually a story she can tell a little bit better uh, than I would possibly be able to tell it. So I would just like to give a warm welcome to Marianneke right now. Thank you so, so much for your time, Marianneke. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me and I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> So for everyone who is seeing you and who is listening for you uh, to you for the first time, mm -hmm. um, how would you describe yourself? Like, who are you? What are you doing? Where are you living? Um, tell us all about you. Okay. Well, um, as you well introduced me, I'm from the Netherlands, but I'm actually half Mexican as well. So I was brought up in a bicultural family and uh, as part of the bicultural family, um, I was always interested in culture and um, communications and intercultural communications. So when I came across your uh, Instagram account and I started to listen to all your beautiful stories, um, I feel very connected because um, there are a lot of people also, TCKs, they're called uh, third mm -hmm. culture kids. Uh, it is funny that um, our community tends to gravitate to international relationships. Um, I'm in an international relationship at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a, it's a story that we are going to talk about today um, because it's a little bit different maybe from what you usually talk about mm -hmm. in your regular podcasts, right? <laughs> mm, it's definitely different. But um, as, as we've talked about, like, I do think that it's very, 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 very important to cover this topic as well. Mm -hmm. um, especially and we're going to get into detail a bit um, more towards the middle and the end of this episode i think what's going to be very helpful for everyone who just might be in a similar situation like you are right now is um, your experience and the person i got to know over the last few weeks i mean we are in contact since a while already is a very um, positive person, a very uh, forward looking person, a very like um, person that so you do have the ability to um, to kind of drag you out yourself out of situations where others would most probably just give up already. Mm -hmm. um, but as I said, this is something we're going to talk about a little bit in detail later on. Mm -hmm. But I'm really, really happy that we're going to talk about your story, about why you are in Brazil right now, about what's going to uh, be the reason for you to move back to the Netherlands um, within the next few minutes. And I really, really appreciate your time. And I really appreciate that you're so open-minded towards telling your story as well. So yeah, to get back to the point, it is different to what I usually cover, but it's so important and i'm really happy to have you here today yeah thank you so much i also think that people should be aware of the struggles of course that um we might face in international relationships and uh so i want to tell a little bit about my story and hopefully someone would relate or if i can help one person with my story i'm really happy to to do yeah. that so yeah Shall I start telling yeah. the story? Let's go back <laughs> okay. a little bit. I would say let's just start um, in the beginning. Okay. Um, and then we move to what actually brought you to Brazil. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, 
so well. I mean, I am living currently in Brazil, but that was not the case six years ago. I was living in the Netherlands. Um, I was working in uh, communications. I'm actually, um, funny story, I'm a cross-cultural communicator. Mm -hmm. And um, so then I was working for a company there and um, well, single at the time. Um, I met my current partner uh, through a dating app and um, we were chatting just in the beginning through that app and it slowly progressed to talking through Skype as well. Mm -hmm. And I think we talked through Skype like about a month um, and then we decided to actually meet in person. And since the moment we met, we really hit it off right off the bat. We were very well connected. Um, I felt um, understood. It was kind of like a fairy tale uh, first date <laughs> because uh, we went to a very nice cafe in a little city in the Netherlands. Um, then after we were walking in the afternoon, right beside the river, the Rhine. And, um, and then after um, we, we went just for a couple of drinks, we basically spent the entire day together. And um, it wasn't actually common for me because usually if I would go on a date, well, it would just go for a couple of drinks and then that's it, you know, just so mm -hmm. maybe for a couple hours, but we, actually ended up spending the entire day together like we didn't really want to uh get separated mm -hmm. um so by the end of the night we sealed the date with a kiss and a hug and just right at that moment we said well i think this is it we want to be together and uh and uh, we slowly started to get to know better uh, each other. So I was living in a different city than he was. So we were visiting each other back and forth. Um, so then he would spend some time in my apartment. I would go to his apartment and uh, we went a couple of times uh, out of the Netherlands as well. We traveled together um, and yeah, it, I mean, in the beginning, everything was nice. I was very much attracted to uh, his background, um, mm -hmm. him being Brazilian. Um, he started to introduce me slowly to his culture. Um, I had never met a Brazilian before. So um, he had his group of friends also in the city where he was living at the moment and um and then we also had a lot of things in common like music and then he introduced me to this brazilian band that usually played every weekend in a bar in his city and uh we would just go and and you know dance and watch uh the plant the band play um and just slowly, I, I started to just fall in love with every element, the music, the food, the, the way people were, the warmth. Um, so then, of course, um, there was a moment actually when um, he sat with me and he told me, look, um, I cannot stay here because mm -hmm. I am only going to be working here for a period of time. So we, we have to um, talk things through to see where this is going because we were getting pretty serious since the beginning. Like since that date, we basically stopped, um, you know, seeing anybody, we were uh, completely exclusive. Uh, we, we were, almost like living together basically because we were spending so much time at each other's places. I mean, we each had our own apartment where we spent a lot of time together. Um, so then um, when he talked about moving back to Brazil, um, it wasn't for him an option to actually stay in the Netherlands because he was just there for a period of time, as I said before. 
Mm -hmm. um, so then the decision really relied on me of whether I should follow him or I should stay in the Netherlands. Um, so then I decided that I wanted to follow him and I wanted to come to Brazil. I've never been afraid actually to, you know, uh, travel and get to know mm -hmm. other countries and other places. So for me, it was a very exciting experience. So I was very motivated. I, I, I really didn't even actually think, think it twice when he told me, well, you know, would you consider moving to Brazil? And I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> so you answered uh, him right away. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, of course I talked it through also with my family and, mm -hmm. uh, my family was a little concerned because I had never been in Brazil and, um, and I had no one here also. It was actually the first time for me that I would be without any, let's say, support from people I knew, either friends or family. So it was really going to be just me and him and, well, his family, which I didn't actually know. Um, right before he came back to Brazil, uh, his parents went to visit us in, in the Netherlands. So we spent like a week together. But the problem was that I couldn't really speak the language. So it wasn't really, I didn't, I couldn't actually get to know them because we couldn't actually talk the same language. I mean, uh, my partner was translating and mm -hmm. uh, a lot gets lost in translation yeah. as well so I was just smiling all the time and they were smiling mm -hmm. and I was like okay well I think the energy feels well <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think we're gonna be okay yeah. Um, so yeah basically um, in the end I decided that I wanted to move to Brazil so he moved back um, a couple months before I actually moved back, to, uh, moved with him um, mm -hmm. here to Brazil. Um, so I had some time also for myself to actually, you know, be a little uh, distant, distant myself a little bit of the situation to really be rational and think, okay, so are you really thinking things through? Are you really going to do this? And mm -hmm. um and yeah, I, I never second guessed it. That's the thing. Like I was really, my mind was set. I'm going to Brazil. I'm going to Brazil. I started to study a little bit of Portuguese as well at the, at the time. And, uh, and that's the thing. As soon as I arrived here, that's what I started with. I started to learn a language. Um, I loved the language, which mm -hmm. helped a lot. So mm -hmm. um and also because I also speak Spanish, it helped me to, you know, maybe it was easier for me, the path of learning the language because they're very close. Oh, um, now my Spanish is a little rusty because of it, but, <laughs> but it was worth it. <laughs> so I think that was the first thing, uh, getting to know the language so that I could actually communicate with his family because that was for me the goal, that I could get to know his family, get to know his world. Mm -hmm. And that's what, when it all started. Mm -hmm. For how long have you both been dating before you actually um, got your things and moved to Brazil? Well, um, so all together, it was about a year. So mm -hmm. when we decided to move together, I think it was maybe the fourth month that we were dating. So that's when we started to talk about moving in together. Mm -hmm. But we actually moved together after a year of, of, mm -hmm. of dating. Yeah. Yeah. So but that still gave you some time like month four to month 12 of dating um, to take care of everything um to maybe even rethink it but i do feel like that wasn't an option for you so as you said like you were head over heels and you were like okay just go for it i'm not afraid at all 
Mm -hmm. um, I do have a good feeling about all this and it's, it's just going to work out. So there was no option that this is not going to work out at some point, right? No, no. And I think, you know, it wasn't that I wasn't really rational about what mm -hmm. I'm, I was doing because in fact, I had gotten out of a really bad relationship before. Mm -hmm. I like three years before I actually met him. So I was really, you know, trying to, I in the beginning, I was kind of like walking on eggshells. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, as much as I was completely in love with him, um, I was still, you know, kind of like getting to know him deeply. So that's, I think also that was the reason why we became so serious because we went in it, into it very deep since the beginning. So there mm -hmm. were no more, like, I, I, I was an open book. Like I told him, you know, this is what I want. This is who I am. So there, this is what you see is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and he was very transparent with me as well. So it really felt honest and I never had met someone um that was so transparent as he was and um and also a uh, funny story is that after the first month of dating I invited him over to my house to <laughs> spend Christmas with my family which if you know uh, we don't actually do that in the Netherlands. We are very, uh, we're a small circle and we don't really invite too many people, especially people we just met. Um, but I don't know, it just felt so natural just to, mm -hmm. and he was going to spend the holidays there and he was going to be alone. So then I said, well, you know, I, I wouldn't like you to be alone. So why don't you spend Christmas with my family? And I, mm -hmm. And he clicked with my family incredibly, like wow. with my siblings, with my mom, my mom loved him. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it was also the fact that he had the Latin blood in him and we also <laughs> are half Latin. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we were, you know, he was preparing caipirinhas and my mom loved oh. it and everyone loved it. <laughs> So, so that also gave me a lot of, you know, uh, peace of mind with the fact mm -hmm. that I said he fits. It's it just feel feel everything fits. Everything goes together. I mean, um, we went out also many times together with my family, and he just you know talked hours with my mom and and oh. with my siblings as well. With uh, I'm also very close with one of my cousins also from my mom's side and. Oh, my cousin and I, we are kind of like best friends. And, uh, and then I even asked her, like, we're going to go out uh, with your husband, like, uh, as couples. And, and please tell me if you see something that just doesn't click, just please let me know. Yeah. And she was like, no, he, he's the one, like, he, he really fits with you. So I was so happy to receive also this feedback, you know, it made me feel well that I was, um, I was in the right direction. I just felt that everything was, you know, put there together for me to finally be happy, let's say, mm -hmm. <laughs> not because mm -hmm. of the relationship, um, but just, you know, everything just clicked. So yeah. it was just, there was just nothing for me to think, well, you shouldn't, you know, take a leap of faith and just, you know, go for it. So no red flags at any no. time, which is amazing. No. And I feel you 1000%. I, and I think that's, that's something um, everyone who's listening right now, who's moving abroad for someone actually in order to live together as well, can relate to that. Obviously you do have some fears and you at least i was aware that there might be a chance it couldn't work out but um after all the heart wants what the heart wants so you just go for it and you just go with the flow and you try it out and you see where this is going to lead you and all those positive feelings the attraction to one another uh, to to one another is just so much bigger than um, the voice that tells you, hey, maybe it's not going to work out. 
So, and from what I understand is that, uh, as mentioned, so for you, just like everything was clear from the beginning, you want to do it, you didn't think twice. Um, Especially, I guess, after your cousin told you like, hey, he's the one. Um, Mm -hmm. There was no doubt at all. Um, And then you guys you've dated for approximately one year until you Mm -hmm. moved your things and -hmm. you moved to brazil so Mm -hmm. the day if you think back the day you took all your belongings you packed your bags and you flew over to brazil how did it make you feel like um i'm sure you still have it pretty much in your in your mind yeah Yeah, it's like it was today. It it, yeah, Mm -hmm. it feels like yesterday, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, So um, my mom and my brother actually took me to the train station, um, and he was also together. And we said our goodbyes. It was very emotional moment, of course. But I I think the I was so happy that I was going to be with the love of my life that, I mean, it didn't feel like I was losing something. I felt like, mm-hmm. you know, I prepared also myself mentally before mm-hmm. leaving. I think also those months before uh, when we actually um, made the decision to, to move um when I made the decision actually to move to Brazil I was very conscious about what I was leaving behind so uh, but also at the same time um it is not something that's uncommon from my family because Mm -hmm. most of my siblings actually don't live in the Netherlands we all Mm -hmm. live abroad so it was just natural I think my mom even told me I I I knew that at some point you were just gonna leave me so (laughs) I don't feel bad about it I'm used to it Uh, we're gonna keep in contact I mean I had been also abroad uh, before so it wasn't for me something new aside from the fact that was going to be a completely new country so Mm -hmm. When I arrived to Brazil, uh, everything was like a fairy tale. I mean, I put in my mind this idea of I'm going to go to this hot country where you have delicious food. uh, The culture is amazing. uh, Nature is amazing. So I think maybe the first three months I was in a honeymoon. I was like, I wanted to just grasp everything I wanted to you know be everywhere I wanted to talk to everyone even if they didn't understand me um (laughs) so the first three months were amazing I have Mm -hmm. to say um so of course I missed my family but I wasn't really thinking about that I was really enjoying myself in Brazil um everyone was so welcoming uh his family even we were kind of like maybe communicating in sign language and the broken Portuguese that I could speak Um, but they were very welcoming Um, then as I said I immediately started to learn the language so um, Mm -hmm. next to where we lived um, there is a university that offered or that has a language institute so they offered uh, Portuguese courses so then I started an intensive course And as I said, Spanish helped a lot. So sometimes I would mix uh, what they call here Portuño. So it's Mm -hmm. a combination of Portuguese and Spanish. So then that helped me a lot so that then I could finally start to communicate with his friends, with his family, and then get to actually know people. And also the fact that I was already uh, putting my head into, well, I need work as well I, I want to work I don't want to stay home I want to do things because I'm a very active person um, so then also he talked to a friend of his who had a school and he said well why don't you teach at the school um, I can talk with my friend and maybe you can work a couple hours there 
-hmm. And that worked out perfectly. So I started working at this school. So, you know, mm -hmm. everything came together. I had a, I had a job. I had, you know, the love of my life. I was living in this hot country. And uh, so, as I said, the first months were amazing, a honeymoon, and there was nothing to complain about until reality hit. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, I think the first thing was that we didn't actually have our own place in the beginning we were living at his parents' house. So in the beginning, when you cannot communicate with people, well, you don't know many things that are happening behind a curtain. Yeah. But when I started to communicate with his family, um, it was very hard because um, I am used to be on my own most of the times. Mm -hmm. And I don't allow people to cross my borders, uh, my boundaries. And I think uh, something that I had to learn is that um, for every person, we have, our, we have our own boundaries, right? So um, our personal distance, I think it differs from person to person, but it also differs, I think, way more when you see people from one culture to another culture so i felt as if maybe um especially his mom was a little bit um i wouldn't say intrusive but let's say she was worried about me so mm -hmm. she wanted to know everything about my life she wanted to okay. have a say on everything about my life and and i understand why she wanted to do that because she basically here basically when you come into a family they adopt you like one of their mm. kids so they're gonna treat yeah. you like one of their kids mm -hmm. and and that's different for me because I was still you know I there's a line of respect and well they're they were his parents not my parents um but they were really pushy in that sense of um you know um, why do you do things this way? Why don't you do things that way? And we all have different ways of doing things, you know, from the way we um, wash our dishes to the way we mm. do our beds. And they were these little details that started to, you know, become an issue between his mom and myself. Um, so then I said, you know what, I cannot live with your parents. I'm sorry. I need my space. I mean, I cannot be told how to wash my dishes and how to, you know, do my bed because yeah. we each have our own ways to do things. You know, I understand that I'm living in her home, but, but I also deserve to have my own space mm -hmm. and my own individuality. So that that was an issue um, in the beginning, one tiny issue that started to become more and it started to affect my relationship with, with his family. And of course he was in the middle, so he couldn't really take, you know, any sides or anything like that. So, mm -hmm. um, so the decision was, okay, um, he had an apartment, which is the apartment that I'm living right now in. Um, but then he just thought that maybe in the beginning it would be okay to live with his parents until I could get more used to the country, the culture and so on. Um, but then we moved out and things started to become way easier and, and just things, things became better with mm -hmm. his family and, and myself when we had this distance. Um, the second thing was that when I started to work at the English uh, school, um, it's funny that um, one thing that I really didn't understand is how people started asking, what are you doing here? But in mm -hmm. a sense of, are you crazy? Like, why did you leave the Netherlands? Why are you living in Brazil? And I was like, well, 
I have my reasons. I mean, I came here for love, but I mean, also I, I, I love this country. I mean, mm -hmm. is there something I shouldn't love or is there something I should know that nobody has told me about? Mm -hmm. So, um, especially my former boss, he was kind of like, he put me in a room and he really asked me like, so why are you here? Tell wow. me, like, what do you like about Brazil? There's wow. nothing here that you should you, you should be proud of. And I was like, oh my gosh, really, I just arrived. <laughs> but he's from Brazil. So he, yeah, like, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Oh, wow. So he was bashing his own uh, country and culture yeah. kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, so I was really in oh. shock when, 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 when he started to, you know, questioning, uh, questioning mm -hmm. me over being here and, and, and then showing me this side of Brazil that I didn't know. Um, then I even started to question myself, um, okay, so should I be here or should I be somewhere else or what's going on here? So, and I didn't only see that with him. I started to mm -hmm. get a lot of questions from other people, people really strongly questioning me, why was I living here in Brazil? And showing me their perspective of their own country. So mm -hmm. I was very saddened by that. And I got very confused because mm -hmm. I was, you know, uh, in my eyes, I was, uh, I had this perception and, and then people were showing me a different perception of their own country. And, and it felt, and it, it was only Brazilian. So Brazilians actually talking like this about their own country. And, and that really, um, I went into confrontation with myself because the, you know, it's like a message that is, inserted in your mind all the time like why are you mm -hmm. here why are you here mm -hmm. so then I started to question like why am I here what am I doing so I then with all these negative messages it was the environment mainly that I was working at that was a little toxic maybe if I if I may say so mm -hmm. so then I also decided to you know maybe it's the type of people I'm reading with that I should maybe you know not be um uh, close to so um then I stopped working at that place and also I started to feel a little bit better um understanding that okay their perception is not my perception I'm not minimizing the problems in Brazil. Brazil is a country that uh, has a lot of growth to do. And there are a lot of social problems that we cannot, um, that we cannot be blinded uh, and, and we can't just um, minimize because they're mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But then you can understand that when someone from the outside comes with the pink, pink glasses and just mm -hmm. wants to, you know, have a cool life and just, yeah. just enjoy uh, whatever the country has to offer, then you're bombarded with so many negative um, comments about your own country, then I started to get in shock. And that's when my culture shock started. I couldn't understand why there were some people that were so reluctant of, um, of me being here because of their own perception of their own country, because they were passing their, their um, frustrations to me. Yeah. And, and I had to really, um, I even had a talk with a specialist because it was really getting to me. I started to get a little depressed as well because I, as I said, I started to question things. Also, going back to the relationship, um, I couldn't talk these things through with my, with my partner. Mm -hmm. And that really saddened me because, of course, then I was like, why are people, you know, thinking this way? Do you think that way about your own country? Um, and, and he didn't really, he couldn't really open up to me to, um, 
or put himself on the side, let's say, mm-hmm. to, to be able to understand my feelings, understand what I was going through. So I felt really alone, that I couldn't really share what I was experiencing, what I was going through. Another thing was also, I physically was experiencing things that I was not comfortable with. Mm-hmm. Um, my metabolism changed completely here, basically from being very active, um, you know, cycling everywhere, walking everywhere here. I, uh, as soon as I left the school, I opened my own business and I worked mm-hmm. from home. So I am working from home. Um, so I, I stopped really any physical, uh, activity or anything like that that didn't help um and also maybe isolate i isolated a little bit myself as well from people just not to get this you know vibes or this strong perception that i didn't like to to get so i know that i started to create my own capsule or i put myself in this little like box and mm-hmm. I didn't really um, allow myself maybe to, um, to find other ways to connect with people mm-hmm. because I was getting all these uh, negative, you know, feedback from, from people who were close to my husband or um, from people who were, you know, within the environment that he used to, you know, be in. And how can you also say, well, I'm not going to hang out with your friends and I'm going to hang out with these people, but because they are your friends and they're the people that you like to be with, but then they were also influencing me in a negative way. Mm. So to cut things short, um, I entered into a depression that I didn't know how to get myself out. Um, As I said, I looked for help. I looked for therapy. I talked to an intercultural coach also to help me out. Um, Also being a cross-cultural communicator, I was really frustrated because I Mm. said, this is my job. My job is to be able to communicate to people and to try to address the subject and find out ways to, you know, find common sense. And I wasn't... Uh, I wasn't able to do what I was supposed to do in my job with myself. Mm -hmm. So I went through a lot at at that moment. And as I said, my husband wasn't able to understand Mm -hmm. even half of what I was going through because his process living in the Netherlands was completely different. And at some point also um we had to sit down and say okay are you okay here are you do you do you like living here and I didn't Mm -hmm. know I didn't know if I like to live here anymore I felt as if I the only thing I knew was you know with this little world uh, between my apartment and the few people I had contact with but I couldn't see myself anymore living here. And um, so I went into a very dark place Mm -hmm. that I think I slowly started to get myself out probably by the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I've been living here six years. So that would be um, four years into living here. So after four years, I finally started to feel that I was really starting to integrate myself to really start. I really started to get to to know the side of the culture that I really wanted to know. Mm -hmm. But that's when I started to. That's exactly when I, I distanced myself from that group of people. But again, the problem was that that group of people was the environment that he was in. So I think there's nothing wrong, of course, of having, you know, separate groups of people and each one have their own individual life. 
but I don't think that your partner likes to feel that your friends are not welcome or that you mm. reject your friends, you know? So, and he felt it and he talked to me. So you don't like my friends and you don't like my family and you don't like to be here mm. and you're just sad and you're not happy here. Oh, okay. And, and then I was like, well, wh what can I do? I'm doing my best. You know, I'm learning, I'm trying to get out, I'm trying to, to find a way to fit. Um, I have my business now here and it, it has become my life as well. So, um, and by the time that I started to actually get out of my cocoon, I started to get to know people that were more in my vibe. That's when I started to get to know Ayurveda. I started to get to know people. I started to do yoga. So I started to get to know people within that, you know, um, world as well. And were mm -hmm. people that were more in line with the way that I thought. So then I saw, oh, there's another world. There's the mm -hmm. other kind of people that I can actually connect with. And I started to feel very well about it. But by then our relationship started to go down. Like he closed himself. I closed myself and we were not able to actually communicate with each other or empathize with each other. So at the time I remember before the pandemic started, I asked him, so where do you see yourself? Do you see living here? Do you see yourself living here? Do you see yourself um, living somewhere else? At some point we talked about going back to the Netherlands but for mm -hmm. him, it wasn't really an option because of the type of job that he has. He works for, for a university. And once you get a job there, it's a permanent job. And it's actually um, a job that, it's th that many people want to have because uh, basically in order to be fired from that job it's almost impossible so and he worked for that you know it, it's his passion it's it's what makes him wake up every day basically so who or what I was I to ask him okay so leave your job and please find something else because I'm not feeling quite myself here yeah and then asking about you know a future like okay so are we gonna have kids aren't we going to have kids? By the time I started these talks with him, when I was ready to have these talks with him, mm -hmm. he had already closed up and we just couldn't, you know, we just couldn't find a way to each other, back to each other. So through the pandemic, so through these last two years, we, we really started to talk to each other and say, you know, what do you want from life? Where do you want to go? I started to ask myself that. And although now I see Brazil as a country that I could potentially live in, if I had someone to support me in that sense, emotionally, um, I could probably see myself maybe living here, but not the way, not in that environment that I was in not the way that I was um so and then he also couldn't really meet me halfway mm -hmm. so then um last year we finally sat down and we said okay I think this is not working anymore um there are many things that we just can't seem to fit together uh there are cultural aspects that maybe we can't really find a way to meet each other halfway and there are also personal aspects that maybe you would have problems you would have maybe with someone from your own culture even that we just also couldn't you know connect and um so then we decided that we were going to separate and mm -hmm. uh but the thing is that I believe people have to think that when you get into a relationship, of course, there's always a risk. You don't have things, you know, there, there's nothing written. 
So for us, the fact that uh, we come from different cultural backgrounds, probably it's even a higher risk as well. It's already difficult with someone from your own culture. So adding the mm -hmm. cultural aspects does make it more challenging. Um, so I think it is, it is very important also to see if your cultural background also kind of fits also with that other cultural background. And if you are also personally and mentally prepared to be able to, um, to face all the challenges um, that you're going to, to face whenever you're living in that, uh, in your partner's country. I didn't know that I was gonna go through all these because I had the pink glasses on. I always thought, you know, nice tropical country and uh, beautiful music and, mm. uh, warm people but then i was also i also faced something that i don't think it's the story of every person that comes here i think it's it was something very personal um but it could happen to anyone if mm -hmm. it happened to me it can happen to anyone um that you go to this country that you don't know anything about and there will be positive things that would be negative things, but I think we need to prepare ourselves before we come here to know mm -hmm. that there is still a chance that it's not gonna work out. Even if you want, yeah. even if you put all your energy and all your effort for it to happen, mm -hmm. it is, there is a chance. It's a 50-50 chance that it will work or it, will, it won't work. So um, I think I was very lucky to have a good safety net in terms of family. My family has supported me incredibly. And, um, and I, I've been able to talk this, things through. I've been able to talk to other people so that have gone through the same thing as I have. So that would be my first advice to people who are going through something similar um, to seek people who are going through the same or have gone through the same as you have, because you see that you are not alone. It's okay not to adapt. That's the thing. People think, okay, so it will be okay. In four years, you'll adapt to the country. In four, in six years, you'll feel like a fish in the water. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not the case. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not even about the culture, but about you, about the lifestyle that you want, about the personal goals you have in life and the environment that you want to live in. So you have to really be aware of those aspects. And um, it's not like, okay, so I'm not going to jump into anything because it might not work out. No, I mean, if I knew what I know today and I had to do it again, I would do it all over again because it was worth it. I mean, it was a learning experience. Mm -hmm. um, and in a moment, I'm going to talk about what the current situation is. But I really learned a lot about myself. This was a path, a journey to know more about me, about where my boundaries are, about what I allow uh, to happen and what I don't, I wouldn't uh, let anyone do. Um, and I'm just closer to know what is it that I want to, to, to have in life. So I think being here and being in Brazil was very important for me and being with my partner especially was very important mm -hmm. because my partner was, um, was my teacher, basically. He taught me so much about myself through the struggle as well. He didn't uh, protect me, you know, he allowed me to experience and that's how I was able to find out what I want for myself and what I want in this life. 
sorry, I don't know if you want to jump in and say something about, I mm -hmm. think, think I've been talking a lot. <laughs> the, like you've mentioned that um, you've been in dark places. I assume that your partner was aware of it. What I would be especially interested in is how did you get out of it? Was there was there one thing you did that especially helped you? Yeah, I, what I did was to seek for help. I think the problem is that some people don't have that um, in them to mm -hmm. find help. And I think that is very delicate because as I said, maybe I was very lucky with the fact that I had a safety net. So I was always in contact with my family and I was able to talk things through and say what I felt. And, and especially uh, my cousin or my mom who were always there for me, they, they, they were the ones also, you know, not putting pressure or anything, but mm -hmm. like, okay, so is this really what you want? Uh, try to, you know, try to find help, try to find someone who can guide you, wh whoever that is, if, whether it's a, you know, psychologist or a therapist or, you know, uh, whatever it is, but you need help, you need someone to guide you because you're not okay. You are in culture shock. You are going through things that you cannot really talk to your partner about because he doesn't understand because mm -hmm. he's not going through your own process yeah so as much as you talk those things through you're going to be frustrated because yeah. he won't be able to empathize he will be sympathetic to what towards what you are going through but he mm -hmm. won't be able to fully understand you so you need yeah. to talk to someone so Yeah, so which, I which he not so, sorry for for interrupting, but he he doesn't even have to understand you. No, obviously you wish for your partner to always understand you, but if this is a special situation like you were into, or yeah. you 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 got into, um, as you just mentioned, your partner will not be able to relate to it because he's mm -hmm. never have been in a situation like this, and that's okay uh, right. to accept the fact that yes, he's your partner, but he will not always understand you. And um, at some point you just can help yourself by as you, what you've just said, seeking help on Correct. surrounding yourself with those people who are aware of how this feels like. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I think the fact here is um, I, I wanted to, to, to have connection in the end mm -hmm. and and what drove us apart uh, I think in the end was that we couldn't really find ourselves we couldn't find each other back so how can I explain this I was so far gone at some point that he just had to you know be busy on his own things like he couldn't yeah. really take care of me anymore mm. and that is okay the problem was that when I was ready to say okay I'm finally you know I think I think I'm okay I'm think I think that I can make this work that was too late for him he was mm. already far gone so yeah. so it was It's sad in a sense because it's also about timing, about, you know, he was like, you know, I don't know how long am I going to wait for you? I don't know how long you're going to be in that situation. And, and I have to move on. I have to, you know, live my life. I can't do what, what you're doing. And, and that was the point. He just, he, he couldn't be there for me in the moment that I was already, let's say, ready for, <laughs> for what was next, he had already moved on to a different situation, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. And how are you going to move on from here? Um, I'm in the process right now of 
um, really restructuring my my life. I mean, um, the moment that we decided to separate, uh, then I said, okay, so as much as I feel that I'm finally getting a hold of things here and that I feel, you know, adapted, um, Mm -hmm. I came here for you. So then there would be no point for me to stay here anymore. So I decided to go back to the Netherlands. So I'm going to stay here for a couple of months because, well, uh, we did get married um, in paper. Mm -hmm. So we have to go through the the divorce process and um, then there are just a couple of things that we have to, you know, close before um, I have to to leave. So and also the pandemic wasn't um, the most uh, the best time um to to decide to travel or to to move abroad again or to to move away um i was already planning to go on december but things got a little complicated also with a with a lockdown again in the netherlands and um i was also struggling here with some things so then i decided okay well i'm gonna just work uh save up a little bit for myself um, mm-hmm. a couple more months and then I'm moving back home. Mm-hmm. Um, but the current situation is, um, I think we are very lucky to be the best of friends. So we are very good friends and, uh, we want the best for each other. So mm-hmm. I want him to be happy and he wants me to be happy. So, our living arrangement right now, we are separated, but we are still living in the same apartment. And, uh, and we're just helping each other out. So he, he moved on, he's, uh, you know, he goes to work, he has his own group of friends, I have my own group of friends. Um, but we still, you know, have some time also for ourselves to, you know, check in and say, how are you doing? Are you fine? Without getting too involved either. Um, And he's just being very supportive with everything, whatever you need, I'll be there. Um, Mm -hmm. Not really on the emotional side, but Mm -hmm. in more the practical side of things. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's been a process, of course, to detach myself from the idea, okay, you know, the future that you thought you would have, it's no longer there. But also the fact that I, since I got this opportunity to get to know more about myself, I'm very motivated to do things in the future for me, mm-hmm. not not with a partner but I mean if someone is there fine but for now and I I really want to do things for me I want to do I want to grow professionally I want to you know travel the world whenever we're able to travel (laughs) and uh and I think it's the first time in my life that I actually want to do things on my own and that's that's amazing because I've never had that and I'm so happy that I can finally go back to myself Mm -hmm. and be happy with being just me so Mm -hmm. yeah so for my future plans that's that's basically it so focus on my business make it grow travel the world and just get to know more about myself and who knows maybe in the future I'll get to know another international or not, but that's <laughs> perfectly fine. <laughs> so when you, you are going to get into the plane back to the Netherlands, you will close a good chapter of your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you will yeah. leave in, in peace, so to say. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing mm-hmm. everything so that I really can close this cycle and I don't, mm-hmm. I, I'm not running away. I'm really taking the time to appreciate everything that I lived here, heal 
everything that I had to heal. Um, I love this country with all my heart. And it's still going to be me. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's okay. And it's going to be part of me. And I'm so happy that I got to know my partner because I know that I'm not going to lose him because he, mm. he he's a friend. And mm. he's going to be family still. So mm. I said that I was not going to cry. So <laughs> sorry about the tears. <laughs> okay. um, so, but he, he, is, he, he is a very good friend of mine. So I know that we're going to still be connected somehow. You know, like um, I know that we're going to be checking on each other uh, once in a while. I don't know what's going to happen with, uh, with him. I mean, I really hope, as I said, that everything goes well with um with his job with with his plans with his future but as i said now it's time to you know look for look forward and 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 really um focus on my own plans as a, as 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 mariana yeah. as as me yeah. you know so yeah. without depending on anyone else yeah mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you've never been depending on anyone, first of all. No. Um, I mean, obviously, yeah, no, obviously you moved for him in order right. to be together with him, but you also moved because you wanted to, you wanted to mm-hmm. make this experience. You were excited about it. Definitely. And um, as you've just mentioned, which I think it's wonderful and lovely, you would do it all over again if you if you could turn back time even though if you know what you know nowadays, maybe you would do a few things differently, but mm. the message of like, there are no, no backsies, no, no taking backs and no other regrets. experience, no regrets. Exactly. Mm. And I do think, and this is also why it was so important um, to me to talk to you um that the message you're getting out there of hey this is first of all this is not the end of the world you're only going to grow stronger out of it and um, it's going to be a life lesson it's something you can take positive energy out of even though at some point it felt like a negative experience you've made Mm -hmm. um if you are dragging yourself um yourself or with help out of the black place you went at some point and yes obviously you can be very 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 thankful and very very grateful for for your family that Mm -hmm. they supported you um but also for for your partner that um he deals with the things he he does Mm -hmm. that he's still supporting you and that after all you will in a few months you will jump into that plane obviously like one heart one part of your heart will stay in brazil as you've Mm. made amazing experiences there but the other part of your heart is also going to be very very happy and very lucky that you'll be back in the netherlands and then looking forward to what's going to come next yeah 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 So. so my my last message would be really don't underestimate culture shock it comes in in many different shapes and sizes and really i think having a community like this one for example is so important to listen to other people's stories to see what they're going through because you're not alone and whatever you are going through, maybe someone else is also going through and, um, and you can lift each other up. So mm. I was also very lucky to meet you and we, we you were so sweet uh, when I was also uh, back in November, I was a little bit more down, let's say with the whole separation thing and you were very supportive and your messages also helped me a lot. And uh, so, yeah and listening all these stories also you know like even if they're you know any kind of stories oh they're all different but you still find common you know common things similarities and that you can relate to so yeah yeah if there's someone 
in maybe even a similar situation as you are um, or as you have been into. Um, is it okay if this person is going to contact you? If this oh, person definitely. reaches out to you? So sure. where would they where would they find you? So what's the best way for them to mm -hmm. contact you? Yeah, well, they can send me a message through uh, Instagram. So maybe if you want to leave my Instagram contact details and, of course, drop me a message, we can Skype, we can, you know, chat, whatever, whatever mm. makes that person feel better. Um, I'm here also as another, you know, member of the community and to help people out. So I really want to... You know, one of the main points was to share my story to help others. And I don't mm -hmm. want this only to be the, I want this to be the first step. So if I can help yeah. in other ways, um, please contact me. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Obviously, I'm going to link everything below. So for everyone who's listening and or watching, you will find it in the side notes of the podcast episode, as well as in the YouTube description um and yeah i think i i honestly don't know what to say i'm just like very in peace with myself that we're having this conversation that we were finally able to to have a deeper conversation about this uh, even though if we had the pre-call but i know for a fact that all this is going to help someone out there and even uh, if it's just one person you know we did a lot already and you did a lot already And um, as you just mentioned, you don't have to suffer alone. And there, it's, it's just like the whole journey of moving abroad, being in an intercultural relationship. It's so exciting. It can also be very frustrating. It can be a bunch of work or it's always a bunch of work, <laughs> like any other relationship as well, but especially Uh, as I feel like in an intercultural relationship, as you do have to deal with certain aspects you usually don't have to deal with when you're, yeah, dating someone within your, your own culture. So yeah. I'm very grateful that you shared so much with us, that you shared your story with us. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't thank you enough to be so open um, towards the idea to be part of this podcast today no thank you so much again for inviting me and i hope this is not the last time we <laughs> talk about uh, a subject maybe we have other subjects to talk about and uh and yeah thank you so much christina for for inviting me yeah definitely it was an amazing experience thank you